Today I want to talk about ground baiting for roach on rivers and someone recently commented about the difference between my ground baiting on the big wide deep river at Wimborne and some ground baiting I did on a recent feature on the upper stour. At Wimborne, uh, going back a year or two, I'll show some footage here. I'm ground baiting downstream of where I'm fishing in about probably 10 foot of water. On the upper stour, I'm throwing some ground bait up about five or six yards above me in about five or six foot of water. And the pace of the river is fairly similar. So there's a big difference between where I'm putting the ground bait in and yet what I'm trying to do in both cases is exactly the same. I'm trying to get the ground bait to hit the bottom at a point where my float is under total control. So I've cast in, the float was settled, I've trimmed it up with the line, held it back a little bit and got the bait to settle. So it's, I'm presenting the bait exactly how I want it with it uh, trailing behind the bulk weight along the bottom just bumping along right where the, the ground bait is laying and that trailer ground bait is going downstream. So why this massive difference? The massive difference comes from using two entirely different types of ground bait. At Wimborne I'm using a mixture of gross gardons, census ground bait, mixed with uh, a fine brown crumb and that mixes to a fairly stiff mix that you can ball up anything from a sort of a big walnut up to a, a almost a cannonball, certainly up to a, a sort of a, a Jaffa sized ball as we say. And that goes down as a ball, goes down fairly quickly, it hits the bottom and because the way the gross gardon is made it will break up and it will attract roach. If I was to throw that five or six yards upstream, what would happen is that it would settle on the bottom maybe four yards upstream of me and I could end up with the shoulder roach two or three yards upstream of me and I don't want that. If I then fished, tried to fish that swim, I'd find I was already below the fish in, in quite a few cases and that, that's just no good at all. The interesting bit about this is if I were to pole fish that stretch at Wimborne I would have to calculate exactly where the ground bait was hitting bottom so that the much shorter trot that I would have with a pole compared to using standard trotting gear was catered for. So if I was to throw the ground bait two or three yards downstream, by the time the stuff, the ground bait has settled on the bottom to form that better ground bait, it's five or six yards downstream maybe. And that has increased the range that I need to reach with the pole quite considerably. So that's going to be difficult. So with the pole, I'm going to put the ground bait just upstream, maybe two yards upstream mixed pretty heavy, getting it to go straight down. And that, that's really important. With a, a, a much slower water with the pole, it's much more easy to, to feed in the right spot. And given the right conditions, if we ever get them, um, possibly next summer, I will do some pole fishing on the river and try and show how this works. When I was fishing on the upper stour, I'd found a bag of old liquidized bread, bread that had been put through a blender and I blended this stuff back in March. So as you know, this sort of bait, if you put it in the freezer, it sort of freeze dries given time. I don't quite know how that works, but it gets pretty dried out. It's not like putting a loaf through a blender, uh, putting it in a plastic bag and taking it fishing and using it straight away, which is the ideal where you can press it together in your hand and it will uh, stick together and you can throw it in and it's still fairly moist and lovely. 
because it sort of freeze dried, if I was to throw it in, for a start it would be difficult to throw in because it wouldn't stick together properly. It would also almost sort of float, so it would just float down a few inches under the surface and that was no good. So what I did was wet it slightly, mixed it up, so it was almost half liquidized, half mashed bread, some, somewhere in between, but it, I got it well soaked and then squeezed out the excess water so I could put a little ball together. But this sinks fairly slowly, much more slowly than the ground bait. So I had to throw it four or five yards upstream into a fairly steady bit of water, knowing that it would sink maybe a foot every yard. So by the time it was hitting the bottom where I wanted it, where the fish were, it was probably two or three yards downstream of me, at least maybe four yards. And even though it hit the bottom, it would continue to sort of break up and flake off and bits would go down the river, attracting fish into the swim. That's the important bit. You want to attract fish up into your swim. What you don't want is the fish chasing bait downstream and disappearing out of your swim. You want, especially chub will often lay right down the bottom of the swim and to pull them up the river. The roach are probably there. They, they won't be pulled so much but you need to trigger them into feeding so we've got two but to summarize we've got two basic approaches one is using the liquidized and you could substitute mashed bread which is something i don't use very often nowadays but i have used it in the past and it certainly worked and the other is to use these uh, commercially made ground baits with grace gardens which go down very differently and break up differently and attract the fish into the swim. I hope I've explained the difference between the two approaches and you might say why do I use one and use the other and it's very much on a whim. I'm just trying to enjoy my fishing and, and try different things all the time, fish differently, see what it attracts. The ground bait is a good approach when it's roach and more roach, possibly if they'll bream around as well. When there's more chance of chub, and I find that quite often on the upper stour, certainly on parts of the upper stour, then the, the sort of liquidized or mash bread approach is better. It still attracts roach. I've caught plenty of roach that particular day, but it will attract the chub a few days as well. So sort of horses for courses. There was an approach that's in between that I haven't used for a while, which is what uh, the late Ringwood match secretary Pete Hutchinson used to call stodge and that was to mash up a, a loaf or two just sort of smash it to bits soak it, soak it in the landing net put it into a ground bait bowl smash it up and then add a fairly coarse white breadcrumb to it so that you could throw it and it would get down and he used to then fish a, a good bit of bread flake over that for chub on the, the sort of lower end of the style which is sort of longham parley bounce farm throop that sort of area and it was good for chub and uh, back in the day when he was fishing often get big roach as well uh, on this approach so that's a, another approach that i've used especially on the lower stour to get mash bread down a bit quicker than just uh, the mash bread, which on fairly shallow, fairly fast winter river, it's not enough to uh, be thrown in on its own. I hope I've got you thinking on this uh, short video and until next time, it's goodbye for now.